Hey guys, so we're finishing up a series where we've looked at the example of Nehemiah and thought, if this guy could handle all of these challenges and difficulties as he's following God's leading, then surely I can follow the same pattern. And so what we've been trying to examine throughout this series is how can the example of Nehemiah transform how I think about my own goals? Because each of us has something that we want to achieve in life. And all of us have something that we feel God is directing us to do. And that's what I would classify as like this big calling that God has for our life. But God also has these little things that he wants us to accomplish each day. Be more kind to that person. Give generously to this organization. Read my Bible more consistently, which is what a lot of you have said. You know, we group all these little things together, the little things in life where we say, I want to improve in this area. I want to classify this as my goal. Like, this is my goal. That's what I want to accomplish. In the past few weeks, we've looked at how we can overcome some of the things that can knock us off track and distract us from pursuing what God wants. And then if that happens, how can we pick ourselves back up? set a new goal and begin pursuing that goal once again. But now as we finish up the series, there's one more step we need to examine. What happens when we complete a goal? And there are actually several chapters at the end of the book of Nehemiah that explains what they did as they completed rebuilding the walls around Jerusalem. I'm just going to read a few verses here this morning in chapter 8. So I hope you have your Bibles and can follow along here. Verse 1, And all the people gathered as one man into the square before the water gate, and they told Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses that the Lord had commanded Israel. So Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all who could understand what they heard on the first day of the seventh month. And he read from it, facing the square before the water gate from the early morning until midday, in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. Now, I'm sure for a lot of you, this would feel like work. I mean, it says here that they sat there from early morning until midday. That's just so like hours and hours they are hearing God's word read. Now, listen, I've seen some of you when like we're up here in the youth and you're like, pointing to your watches, telling us it's time to, to stop. But see, they weren't seeing this as work. They were seeing this as a central part of their celebration. I, I want to know more about God. Give me more of God's presence. But here's what was happening as they were reading God's word. They became sad because of all the ways in which they had ignored him throughout their life. It's, it's like they were sitting there in disbelief as this was being read and they thought, how could we have done this? How could we have drifted so far away? Maybe that's where you're feeling today. And maybe you feel like you're completely separated from, from God. Well, if so, let's jump down and read what Nehemiah said in response to their grief. Verse 9. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept as they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink sweet wine, and send portions to anyone who has nothing ready. For this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Like, you understand where they're coming from, right? I mean, how often do you beat yourself up when you don't complete something that you said you were going to do? Especially in your spiritual life. You have this, you get this overwhelming guilt. And what happens for most people is that they know, they're aware that if they spend time reading the Bible, it's going to expose their sin. It's going to reveal their guilt. And they don't want that. So... They avoid it. And the people here are finally at a point where they say, well, I'm not going to avoid it anymore. 
and they were really feeling the full weight of their guilt. But Nehemiah said, don't be grieved. Because what? The joy of the Lord is your strength. I imagine what Nehemiah was saying in this moment was, let's experience the joy that's before us because we were able to accomplish this great thing. We, we, we built the walls, but we weren't able to do it without God working through us. See, the great thing about setting big God-sized goals is that you get to see him work in mighty ways. And that, and that joy that you experience and, and, and you see the accomplishment, the, the fruit of the hard work, you, you can immediately surrender that to God and say, God, this is because of you. Like you were the strength that allowed me to accomplish this in my life. And so what is it that you've set out recently where, where you've seen God work and you just stop and God, thank you. I praise you for working through me in this way. Because whenever we complete a goal that, that God has set before us, there are only really two ways that we can and should respond. We say, thank you, God, for what I was able to accomplish. And we say, what's next? So what's next for you? Well, what's the next thing that God wants you to pursue? Consider that with you this morning.